Okay. Hi. Um, so this is Gridley. We're in Gridley in uh, Butte County. And what's your name, sir? Is Robert Orr. O R R. Robert O R R. Mm -hmm. Okay, Robert Orr. So you were you're a victim of the the fires up there. Did you live in Paradise? Yes. Yes, we did. Honey Run Road. And uh, what's the situation with you? Have you, have you did you lose your home? Uh, absolutely. Every every uh, every bit of it. Plus all the private things inside it. Yes. Yes. Wow, that's hard. And where are you staying now then? Uh, we or how do you get your help? Where we have you? a residence here. Uh, it's a house. We have it for a year, uh, maybe longer. Uh, we have been staying here at the clinic. Uh, we're transitioning over to the, the other house now. So we landed on our feet. We did a lot better than most people do. You know, I was reading about it, and you know this whole thing about the rainfall and uh, climate change and all that, uh, all this. Do you? What's your feeling about that? They say that my son vehemently says uh, he's just graduated from uh, Chico State. He vehemently says that uh, we're not evacuees; we are climate refugees, because California, Northern California, didn't get any rain until Thanksgiving. Yeah, that has to be. Uh, a dramatic shift in, in weather, a dramatic shift in climate. Uh, so yeah, he, he feels that we're actually climate refugees. Uh, we should have gotten our rain a long time before uh, Thanksgiving. Well, actually, so do, because uh, I read some of this, you know, and like I say, I have a blog, and uh, that's why I'm doing this. And I, I think I was reading that there normally would be four or five inches of rain, or something like that, at, at this time of year, or that time of year. Right. And right. That, that had an effect. But of course, there's a lot of people that say there's no such thing as climate. Climate change, you know, but, but what was it? An older community paradise, mostly? Uh, yes. Um, uh, originally, it was apple orchards, lots and lots of apple orchards. It's the relatively flat part of the ridge, which is why a community grew up there. Yeah. Uh, uh, but initially, in you know, uh, 1850 gold rush, there was no gold, so uh, it was spared the uh, uh, environmental degradation of, of the gold rush. Uh, I suppose a lot of timber and lumber came out of there to support uh, the gold rush, but there was no gold rush up there. So it was an agricultural community. It's grown into a, a retirement community, a very, very nice community, very, very nice people. Yeah, and it nice wasn't people. real affluent, right, was it? No, not especially. A lot of retirees. Yeah. Uh, um, who, who, like everybody else, had everything they owned in their house. Yeah, no, I, and, uh, I know. As I say, I had, I had mine, and I was fortunate. But God, they, you, you, you lose your entire lives. Yes, yes, and and uh, you don't stop to think uh, about the everything that everything means. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, uh, a kitchen carving knife suddenly means a lot to you. Uh, <laughs> it's. You know, well, t tell me, uh, um, is there a lot of anger among the people? I don't know what the political climate really is you hear about rural california it's this and that but is, is is there a lot of anger among the people that were damaged here or i don't think so i don't think not yet um there's the uh the lack of rain uh part and that's that's an uh, act of god yeah uh, you can't be angry about that however the the response it was very very unfortunate the fire started just before about an hour before sunrise it started in the dark um, it wasn't as visible and recognizable uh, at a distance at night. Um, by the time there was enough light to fly the aircraft, um, the smoke was so dense that they could not fly any aircraft. The fire response um, was standard at first, limited shortly thereafter, and then none. They took all the personnel they had, uh, fire, Police, highway patrol, police from Chico, with one aim and one aim only, get the people out of this town. Yeah. And they did a miraculous job of it. I'm sure that they, by their efforts, saved thousands of lives, thousands of lives. Um, we had no notice, uh, no warning, no evacuation, no fire trucks, no police cars, nothing. We had the fire coming up our side. We were on the opposite side that the fire started on. Uh, it had obviously jumped, started up our side, the wind was blowing our way. Um, uh, no notice other than a 50-foot wall of flames. Wow, that's and, incredible. And, uh, I'm a day sleeper. I have a darkened room. Both doors are closed. I run a fan for, for noise. You work nights then? Yes, yes I do. Uh, my son woke me up. We left the house 12 minutes later with the clothes on our backs and our two dogs, period. Wow. Uh, if he hadn't been up, he could have gone to school earlier. 
He could have stayed asleep and gone to school later. He just happened to be up. Uh, looked out the window and realized there was something very wrong with the early morning light. It was orange, it was dull, something wrong. He yeah. stepped out on the porch, half dressed, and, and could see the, uh, the smoke. Um, tried to get something on the TV to tell us uh, what was going on. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Well, what about the PG&E thing? If you remember, I haven't followed it as closely since it's been over. Um, the, the whole thing about it was started by PG&E, Sparks, a woman had sent an email. Have you heard that? Yes, yes. And I believe it has two components. One is the uh, um, sparks were visible in the towers minutes before the fire was ignited at that site. It looks pretty much like the towers, um, the power lines um, are responsible. Now, there was a lady who called PG&E and said, you know, there are sparks near my transformer, near my house, on your lines. And PG&E said, well, we'll be out, uh, I think this was midweek, the week of the fire. Uh, PG&E said they'd be out um, Thursday or Friday. Uh, and then they called back and said, we'll be out first of next week. Wow. That is when and where the fire started from. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, it seems, uh, at least at face value, um, and, you know, they're, uh, they're all lawyering up and uh, being very careful about what everybody says, what anybody says. Uh, another component to this is there is a, uh, a feeling and a rumor that uh, the powers that be in the city of Paradise, the head of the city council, the mayor as such, they had evacuated all of us for the, um, the dam crisis. Oh, no. Uh, I remember that, for, the Oroville. For, for a nearby fire oh. uh, the year before. It started down below uh, Honey Run, down almost in Chico. But, you know, it burns up canyons, so we were threatened, we were evacuated. They took sort of a black eye. A lot of people got evacuated, didn't need to be, <clears throat> very much inconvenienced, this, that, and the other thing. They took a black eye over that. That was last year, uh, now, now the year before. Um, uh, this time, the rumor is that they delayed the evacuation orders to avoid another black yeah, eye. Yeah, they were nervous. Of that nature. Yeah. Uh, my son and I, like I said, we got out 12 minutes. Um, we, we had to leave within 12 minutes. Um, turned back around as I was leaving. My son drove out first. I drove out next with the dogs. Turned and looked back, and 75 yards from the house, down in a small gully, uh, with the wind blowing our way 20 miles an hour or stronger, 75 yards away, flames. 50 feet tall. Wow. That was my last image as I left. No evacuation orders, no sirens. The city of Paradise has a citywide siren uh, for um, uh, public alert, public, uh, public warning. Um, that was not sounded. It may or may not be hooked up these days. They, they use the uh, internet, they use the telephones, yeah. that kind of thing. But no siren, no nothing. We immediately made our way up to Skyway and started down Skyway with a whole lot of people. The saddest people you've ever seen in your life, a whole lot of seniors, a whole lot of seniors, retirees. I heard uh, disabled people too. Is very oh, much. exactly, exactly. And, and what would you do? Uh, you know, some people ran to save their life. Some of these people can't run. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've heard stories. And like I say, we thought our story was a pretty good story. Uh, we had minutes, minutes before our yard and house started on fire. Uh, other people have much better stories than we do. Uh, to include, you know, close call, close call, the ultimate or infinite close call, people didn't make it. Yeah. People didn't make it. Uh, Rock and Gym Society, uh, the Oroville Club opened, opened their arms and, and their club to the Paradise Club, invited us to Christmas dinner, uh, gave us all an honorary membership for a year in their mm. club. Very nice. But talking to some people who, who were uh, displaced by the fire, um, uh, Obsidian, which is a, a volcanic glass, melted. And these people are in the know. They're geology types. Uh, they say obsidian melts at 6,000 degrees. Wow. Uh, unbelievable. Um, uh, well, I know it does. I, remember the Oakland fire? The yes. light's coming now. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Oakland fire, I was up there for that because I work for the water district. Mm -hmm. And I have a bumper. Technically, it was looting, I suppose. But I picked up this bumper from a, it was a Ford Mustang, 
it was about a foot long uh -huh. with two little bulbs in it where you know yeah that's what it had melted it to the, these fires are incredible yeah uh, all right well um the, the last thing i, I this talk about you know, the present administration is um threatening to withdraw funds for firefighting i don't think they're going to do that do you um i think that's a hollow threat yeah it would uh uh give him the award for the uh the worst person on the planet. Okay. If he was to do that, he, he should get hands down, no competition, hand him the trophy, the worst person yeah, well, in he's, the world. He's, he's considered that pretty much. Anyway, look, thanks a lot for talking to me. I really, it's made me, it's been worth it while me coming up here. Okay, I want you to turn around and get a shot of that guy. Yeah. Uh, that's the, my son. He's oh. the one who saved my life. Oh, okay. How you doing? We're, we're not arguing about it at all. He saved my life. He says you saved his life. Uh, You're like me, got more hair on your chin than you got on your head. Yep, yep, have for some time too. Uh, I'm well, I'm sorry I didn't want to interrupt earlier. No, it's okay, I'm just about done actually, because I'm out of thingy time, but mm. that's your dad there, eh? Yep. Well, you lived, oh, well, he just told me your story. Mm -hmm. Where do you work at? Uh, I work at a GameStop up in uh, Chico. Is it GameStop, what does that mean, a casino? Uh, video game, uh, oh, okay. retail store, yeah. Is that where some of the people are up there? Uh, the refugees? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. much. Uh, I was actually just reading the local uh, uh, Chico News and Review, and they estimate that the town has taken on between ten and 20,000 additional persons. Wow. Wh where might they be staying? Like Katrina in hotels or motels or something like that? Uh, there are more houses for sale than rentals, and yeah. there aren't many houses for sale. Uh, yeah. they're, they're cramming into additional friends and families' houses, uh, basically anywhere they can. Well, I'll take can. a ride up there and, and see.